Hi, I'd like to take a few minutes to uh, describe a few options that you have when you're importing CAD geometry into Pathfinder and how to best extract the uh, navigation surfaces from that CAD model. So we're going to go ahead and import, in this case, a Pyrosim model. So here we see the geometry imported. Let's go ahead and roll this around a little bit. And uh, you can see it's got a bunch of uh, surfaces and objects. Let's take a look at that imported geometry real quick. Um, when you import from Pyrosim, it kind of breaks out the grids and the geometry. The grids are the meshes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just delete those. We don't need that in this case. Um, and then we have the model. And then if we kind of break that out a little bit, there's this fire obstruction at a high level and then an imported FBX file that was imported into Pyrosim with an assembly group. And then within that, we have some breakdown into like geometric components, like we have columns, curtain panels, floors, etc. So um, there's a few different ways to create geometry in Pathfinder. One is manual approach. So you can use either the polygonal room tool or the rectangular room tool. You can click to... You know, if I, let's say I want to make a rectangular room, I can pick Z from scene, click on that surface, and then use the like geometry as snap references and just kind of go out and draw, you know, rooms and floors and things like that. You could do the same thing with polygonal tool. Um, and that can take a long time. That's a very manual, you know, sometimes you want to add a few custom rooms or shapes or cutouts in rooms, but, um, there are some other tools that can make it even faster. So the first one I'll, like, uh, I'll talk about here is this extract room tool. And with that, it's just a single click. You click on a room. Uh, it goes to work seeking out the perimeter of the ge geometry here. Um, but it also takes into account um, things in the Z height that might intersect with the floor. So even though I clicked on you know, this surface, you can see it didn't come out all the way to the edge because it also looks up and sees that there's some obstructions above uh, that would block your ability to walk on that part of the floor. And so it extracts out around everything um, in detail. So that's another tool and you could use that, just use the tool and click through and click all the surfaces and extract rooms that way. Um, we also have this capability of extracting uh, or generating a model from BIM. Now, um, it's a little bit uh, it's it's a little bit overstating in a way here that it's a BIM model because there's no BIM here, right? There's no information about like we didn't import a Revit file directly or an IFC file um, that would contain all of the object types and geometry and all of that information. But we can remap the geometry in what we did import and assign it types um, <clears throat> that this tool can use to then generate the navigation mesh. So um, let's go ahead down. We'll just take a look at what we have here. We have columns, curtain panels. OK, these make sense as obstructions. You notice the import type is obstruction here. Wall mullions, great. Floors, ah, floor is a set of obstruction. We actually should set that to floor. Um, generic, it looks like door frames. That's fine as obstructions railings or obstructions. Now here we have kind of an interesting setup. We have runs, which is like one part of the steps. And then we have stairs, which is actually the same same geometry. It includes the run and the sides and everything. So what I'll do on this case is let's pick runs and we'll just go ahead and set this to ignored. So uh, it will not consider this geometry at all as part of the extraction. And for stairs, we'll go ahead and set that to stair. And then uh, we'll go with the supports. Those are obstructions, top rails, obstructions, and walls, of course, are obstructions. So with that remapping here of what kind of object types these are, and, and we're a bit lucky because we have everything nicely organized in the original CAD. If everything was in the same layer, um, it would be more difficult. You'd have to go, you could just go like select things and that's not entirely impossible. Like we do have some tools that can help with this. So for example, if all the floor blocks have a certain material assigned to them, then you can right click and say, um, select all by material. And here you can see we get 28, uh, 26 objects selected. Turns out it's all similar kinds of geometry. I would consider this all to be floor and I would set the import type to floor. Uh, on that. So um, you can do that selections by material. You know, this is like a little bit different material. Uh, these are different, you know. So <clears throat> anyway, you can do that select by material, and that can help you get groups of things that are related by the color or the material. There's also select by color, which is another option there. Um, so that can help 
extract things out if the layers were colored or materials were applied or anything like that. Anyway, so now that we have identified the types, all we have to do is click this generate model from BIM. And you have a few options about how to, de how to determine what it's like walking surface or not from the geometry. If we want to, you know, you can kind of mouse over these and, and see what they do. Um, but at the end, we're just going to click generate here. And after just a few seconds, um, we should get a well-generated model. There we go. And uh, it will hide the imported geometry. And you can see we have a nav mesh with stairs and walls and everything all extracted out around um, and uh, nice navigation surfaces. So you can do a few things here. So one thing is I might want to right click this and say uh, select connected components and I'll check the entire graph and see that um, you know, there's from this room all the way down to the base floor, there's connections. Um, that's a nice first pass check. I can see though that a few things were not selected, were not connected here. So let's go ahead and hide everything that is selected. And we can see we're left with a bunch of little odds and ends of little bits of floor and things that were, you know, maybe inside of walls or, or in corner points somewhere that, um, you know, was maybe identified as a floor, but really didn't have any connection to the rest of that space. So what's really easy here, we just drag and select everything and delete that. And now if we go back and show all, uh, we have just the navigation surfaces that are connected here um, with a nice cleaned up, you know, we got rid of all of those little extra bits of geometry. Um, we can bring our imported geometry back here. And now we show, um, the model with the nav mesh and we can just check that everything indeed come in now some of these um you know some things that are created you might want to just double check that like the rise and runs are correct um you know you can modify those in the stairs so you, you could control click select all of these um and then modify the rise and run of all of those to just dial them in if they're if the auto detection was off at all um but otherwise usually it's pretty good about figuring that out by the geometry so now let's go ahead and add a few agents. Oops, we'll add some occupants. Let's put 50 on the top. And uh, let's go ahead and give them a goal here. We'll just put a exit door. Um, uh, let's see, let's make a long uh, exit door object way down here at the bottom. And I'll just drag it out. Oop. Ah, okay. I'm getting a little bit of a collision detection here. I'm going to turn this off just so I don't, I'm not clicking on any geometry as I'm going through this. So here we go. We'll just put a big door there. Um, that'll be the exit goal. Everybody will come out of the building and head to this exit. So let's go ahead and run that simulation now. I'll bring this back up and run. We'll go ahead and just leave it as untitled. Yep. And in just a few seconds here, we'll watch this occupants remaining goes to zero. Let's go check the results now. And there we go. So we can see everybody here. We'll go ahead and hit play and I'll speed this up a bit. We'll go to like eight, eight times speed here. Um, so we can see them all streaming down. Oh, that's 16, oh, that's really fast. 8X speed, they're streaming down the stairs and out to the exit and there's your simulation. So, you know, really it's a lot faster if you do have the capability of identifying those CAD object types by their uh, sort of building information type. Um, you can then just use this generate model from BIM. If you want to only generate a subsection of the model from BIM, you can also, you know, click uh, here, let's do this. Let me turn off nav mesh and occupants. Okay, and maybe what I want is just like this top part of the building or something, you can generate from BIM selection. So it does the same thing, except it won't use all of the geometry in the model. It'll only use um, like a subset of the geometry that, that you have selected, and it will only extract uh, obstructions and floors and stairs from from that part of the model. So um, there's some optimization that you can do there uh, to reduce that time if you only want are focused on a certain part of the geometry. But hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, please email support at thunderheadeng.com and we look forward to helping you out. Thank you.